All right, so I'm going to go over some things on the portfolio project first, and then we'll get back um, and we'll talk about the weapons for this week. So if you notice that in the packet, we have a step of something like this that has the two end blocks and has this middle piece here. And then on the major assembly, it's shown in both the open and closed positions. So what we're going to do for that is on this middle piece here, we're not going to constrain the position along that. We're going to leave it so it can move. <clears throat> Actually, yeah. And then here, what we're going to do. Instead of making it fixed, right now I can't move anything in this assembly. So I'm going to right click on the assembly there and go down until it adapted. That means that now I can move what's in there in this assembly. So in this assembly, I have I think, that made there that if I change. That's controlling where this is. And so now that this is made it to the end block, when this shaft moves, this is gonna move with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I have this made here, this is between this face and that face. And then this block here. made it to the to this little thread piece right there. Yeah, those two are made in there. So the way when this moves, it moves this thread piece, and that moves <coughs> that that sliding jaw. So I can just change this made here, and it's going to move that forward or backwards. Okay? So I'm going to bring that back up to where this is in that groove. So that's my closed position. Now I want to go in here and go to the representations. <clears throat> and so this is where I can have it do, show it at two different states. So I'm going to click on new. And so that gives me position one. So I go back to the model. Back to this one. I'm just going to double click on it. And now it's saying, do I want to override the original number? So I'm going to say, yes, I want to override the value. I don't want to suppress it here. So I'm just going to override the value. And I'm going to tell it to be three. And that's too far. Now it's back in that in that drop. So now that's my open position. So when I go to presentations, double click on master, I have it closed. <clears throat> no, click on position one, I have it open. Okay. Master is closed. Yeah, master because that's how I made it originally. Oh, okay. And then position one is where I've overridden that mate. Now I can have it open and close. Go back to master. I'm gonna go to my drawing. So I'll put that in. So it's 
So if I double click on it, right here, the position, master or position one. So I told it position one, it showed open. Told it master, it shows it closed. <clears throat> so that's what this overlay does here. Notice that it has kind of the same symbol as right there. So I'm going to go to overlay, and I'm going to tell it position one. So now it's going to show master is solid, and position one is fan line, or a, a stitch line. This is what they're doing. So now I can see both the closed position and the open, open position. Probably go in there and figure out which what that dimension is, which mate that is, and open it up even more. Oh, there is. Open it or close it. So now it's, that's all the way open. So if I go back to my presentation, there's my closed position, here's my open position. Go back to my drawing. Now I can see my full open position. <clears throat> because it's got the grooves for, for big adjustments, and then it's got th the thread here for fine adjustments, so I need to move both of those to get the fully open position compared to the fully closed position. Okay? So that's the, um, the, present, or the, the view modes and overriding them, so you can show both, both uh, things. In there. Any questions? So what was the first thing I need to do to make any of this possible? Yeah, so I had to do my assemblies, but then what did I have to do to that sub-assembly? What did I have to do here to make it so I can move the stuff within that sub-assembly? Yeah, after making adaptive, see the little symbol there. That's let me know that that's the adaptive thing. So if you don't make it adaptive, you can't move anything within that subassembly. Okay. We want to make that subassembly, and we want to make sure that we leave it um, so that this is it constrained within the subassembly. We want to be able to drive that based on the constraints here in the major assembly. And so why not just do everything in the major assembly? Why do we do the subassembly anyways then? What's the purpose of the, of the subassembly? Use. Oh. Why do I have so many subassemblies within this thing? So I have the major assembly, then I have the side subassembly. Then all the pieces to the sides, and a subassembly for the handle, and the parts for that, and then another subassembly, and another subassembly. So why do I have all these subassemblies? No, that's the part drawing. Put the subassembly where I start to put just a couple parts together. Why is, what's the reason behind that? Yeah, how it's going to go there. When you put this thing together, you're actually going to put these sides, you're going to put that in the middle, and then screw these sides on, and then have a bunch of those ready, and then you'll put the handle together, and then you just slide the piece of the middle, put the handle in, and then it's done. So it's kind of the steps you're going to take while you actually put it together. And so that's why we do the subsidies like that. <clears throat> you can do everything in one big thing, but then it makes it hard for the guys in the shop to figure out how they're going to put it together. They're going to like have this big pile of parts and be like, 
Okay, now I'm going to spend a bunch of time doing this instead of just doing a couple of things really easily, getting a lot of subassemblies made ahead of time. <clears throat> so that's where you got to do the subassemblies. Then we use the adaptive to make it so we can adjust it here on the major assembly. There's no way you can put this in after you put the sides, the side pieces, and the end jaws together. It just won't go together. So you have to do, put that in there first, and it's going to slide around in that subassembly. Questions?